Hello everyone, I welcome you all to yet another session on geometry. So this video is going to be one of the last few sessions from the geometry topic, right? Uh, maybe I will try to do one more video after this, all right? after the session 7. So maybe I will try to do one more, wherein I will try to kind of capture different formulae that we have, different properties that we have, all right? that is the plan, let us see how things unfold. But in this particular video, I have brought forward questions from the circles area of the geometry. Right? Now as you all know, circles in geometry is quite a vast area, there are so many properties, different types of problems that we have in the circles. So today we shall be taking up couple of such problems, right? but what I have tried to do here is uh, try to put in some good examples all right, which are not very direct, not very basic, all right, which would be moderate to perhaps difficult. So again, just like any other video, what I would urge you all to do is, uh, whenever you see a question here on the screen, pause it, try it out yourself first, and then uh, after discussion is done, you can match your answers. Right. Let us get started. So this is the question that I have for you, right. you can have a look at it, you can pause the screen now, and uh, Try it out, I give you around 4 5 minutes for this question. I, however, would be starting the discussion immediately. So, let us get started. So, what does this question say? It says there are 3 circles lying on a straight line. So, straight line is AB right? as shown above. So, 3 circles are circle with center D, with center E, with center C. The radius of the 2 of the circles with center C and D, these 2 touching each other are 36 centimeters and 144 centimeters respective, sorry, respectively. So this is 36 centimeters radius, this is 144 centimeters radius. AB is a common tangent drawn to both the circles, all right. So it is also evident because they are lying on the straight line AB. So of course it would be common tangent to all the three circles if you look at the diagram. It is also mentioned, A is a common tangent. Find the radius of the third circle with center E, the small circle here, which touches the circles with the center C and D and line AB externally. Okay, so it is touching these two circles externally and also line. So to find the radius of this circle, this one. So let us say this is some R, the radius is R. Now how can we try to find this out? So what is the value of R, how do we find it out? So it is a really, really big challenge actually if you ask me, not very easy unless you know how to do it, right. If you know how to do it, it is a 30 second question, alright. But if you do not know how to approach this problem because this problem has to be approached using the concept of common tangent, let us discuss that a little bit. So when you draw two circles like this, which are completely disjoint, circle with center C1, center C2. Now for this pair of circles, we can draw 4 common tangents. So 2 of the common tangents shall be like this, this is called as direct common tangents, these 2 and 2 of the common tangents will be like this, this will be called as transverse common tangent, it is touching here and here, transverse common tangent. So there are 2 direct, the ones in red, 2 transverse, the ones in black common tangents. Now there is a formula that we have through which we can find the length of the direct common tangent and transverse common tangent. Of course there are some properties also pertaining to this, but I will not go there, I will straight away uh, drop at the formula level, let me just share the formula. So length of the direct common tangent is given by the following formula, it is given as root over distance between the centers square minus <coughs> difference of the radii, so if this is let us say R1, the radius here, this is R2 minus difference of the radii square. So this is your length of direct common tangent, very similar to this is transverse common tangent, this will be given as distance between the centers minus sum of the radii this time square. So these are the two formulae that we have that you can note of, note down. 
Now, I will take a special case under this. Now, these circles were completely disjoint. Now, what if the circles are touching each other like this? So, this is your center C1, this is your center C2, this is your radius R1, radius R2. So, what will happen to length of direct common tangent in this case? Let us try to understand that. So, what is length of direct common tangent here? Can I say it is nothing but root over C1, C2 square. Now, please notice what is C1, C2. Now, can I say C1, C2 will be nothing but this is your R1 plus this is your R2. Hence, can I say C1, C2 is nothing but sum of the radii. You can say this R1 plus R2 square. What is the formula? R1 plus R2 whole square. This is the distance between the center minus R1 minus R2 whole square. So, length of the direct common tangent will be given by this. Now, when you simplify that, R1 plus R2 whole square is R1 square, R2 square, 2 R1 R2 minus R1 square, R2 square minus of minus plus 2 R1 R2. So, this will cancel out and you will left with root 4 R1 R2. So, that means in case of externally touching circles like this, the length of the direct common tangent becomes a very simplified formula root 4 R1 R2. So, in case of this disjoint circles, this is the formula. In case of externally touching circles, this is the formula. Please note this down. So, now we will go back. Have a look at this. So, if I ask you what will be length of the direct common tangent for the circles C and E? Can I say it is going to be this? Right, length of the direct common tangent. And how do we get this? These are externally touching. So, can I say this will be nothing but root, what is the formula? Root 4 R1 R2. So, it is going to be root 4. What is R1? Radius of C. R2, radius of E is R. So, when you simplify, this is going to be root 144 R. So, I am going to write it simplified form. So, this length of the common tangent between C E is root 144 R. It's all right. Now, what is the length of the common tangent between E and D? This one. Again, this is also external touching. These two circles are also external touching. Root 4 R1 R2. Now, what will that be? Let's simplify. So, it's going to be root 4 R1 is R. R2, I think, is 144. Yes. So, 4 into 144 is 576. So, root 576 R. So, this is the length of the common tangent between D and D. Now, can we write this root 144 as root 144 is 12. So, can I write this as 12 root R. Similarly, root 576 is 24. So, can I write this as 24 root r. That is all right. Now, also please answer what will be length of the common tangent between C and D. So, that means I want this. What is this going to be? C e. So, again circle C and D are also externally touching. So, their length of common tangent will be root 4 r 1 r 2. What will that be? This is going to be 4 r 1 r 2. So, root 4 is 2, root 36 is 6, root 144 is 12. So, 2 into 6, 12 into 12 is 144. So, this is going to be 144. Okay, this is going to be 144. So, now diagram wise can I say this red zone plus this blue zone should be equal to this black zone entirely. So, that means what will the equation look like? It will look like 12 root r plus 24 root r should be equal to 144. So, when you solve this 36 root r is going to be 144. So, 36 goes 4 times square on both sides r will be equal to 16. That is what is asking us. 16 centimeters because the units are centimeters here. So, what is the value what is the value of the radius of the circle E? Circle E is going to, the radius is going to be 16 centimeters. 
So, in this problem, one important formula that you would have noted down, right? You would have learned in case you did not know it earlier, was length of the direct common tangent between two circles which are touching each other externally. I hope we are clear with this. So, if you know this formula, the question is solvable. Within like two minutes, you can easily solve this question, one to two minutes time. But if you do not know this, then this will be a big, big, big struggle to get to the answer. I hope you followed this. Now, there is one more problem that I have. All right? There is also a good problem. You can just have a look at it and try to try it out in uh, around 4 5 minutes again you can pause and try it out i would however be discussing the question let me read it out two identical unit circles now what does unit circle mean that means the radius is 1 two identical unit circles are such that each circle passes through the center of the other so that would mean what this is one circle unit unit radius so, this circle passes through the center of the other. So, this is C2. So, the other circle will be like this. So, this also passes through the center of the first circle C1. So, they are passing through the center of each other. So, two circles are like this, they are identical circles. What is the area common to both the circles? So, basically, I want to find out this area. Now, how can we get to this common area? How can we find it out? So, for answering this, there are some basic details that one must know. One of the details is, if you take a circle, if you take sector of a circle, which makes an angle of theta at the center, area of the sector is given as theta i 360 into pi r square. r is a radius, pi is a constant. So, this area will be given by this theta by 360 into pi r square right? that is how we find the area of the sector. <coughs> make a note of that because I am going to make use of this formula in order to solve this question. So, how do we answer it? So, we may answer it as observe. So, we already have C1, C2 plotted here. Let us assume this vertex here where the circles are intersecting is the vertex A, this is vertex B. Okay. Now, can we say this C1, C2 distance is nothing but one unit? Can you also say C1, A, that is the radius of the first circle, this circle is also going to be one unit. C2, A is also going to be one unit. So, that means can I say this triangle C1, C2, A is going to be an equilateral triangle. And what is area of equilateral triangle? Root 3 by 4 into side square. Similarly, can we prove this triangle to be equilateral? We can do that. Now, what do we want to find out? We want to find out area of this common region. That means, I want to find area of this region that I am drawing now. I want to find this entire region. So, that means, you can see this region that I want is including these two triangles also. So, my required area will be nothing but these two triangles plus these four smaller regions. These four smaller regions. Now, how do we calculate this? So, one of the ways in which we can look at it is, please notice, if I ask you what will be area of this sector, I am trying to highlight this sector, please note, what will be area of this sector? So, this will capture the two triangles along with these two dots, most of my areas, required areas are covered. What will be area of this sector? Area of the sector, we know the formula is theta by 360 into pi r square, r is 1. And what is theta here? Theta is this angle. Now, can I say this is 60, this is 60. So, overall theta is going to be 120. So, can I say area of the sector that I draw, the black sector is 120 by 360 into pi r square which is nothing but pi by 3, it is nothing but pi by 3. So, area of this sector is pi by 3. But please notice, when you say pi by 3, 
you are missing out on this area and this area, you are not covering that actually. Now for covering that, what I will do is, notice, I will consider another sector, please look at this sector now, the sector that I am drawing in green. Now this sector will include the two missing areas that we left out the previous time. So area of this sector, the green sector, can I say this will also be pi by 3, same logic. Now when you add these two areas, please notice what will happen. So can I say total shaded area Can I say it will be area of the sector 1 plus sector 2, pi by 3 plus pi by 3, 2 pi by 3. But please notice, when you are adding this black sector and green sector together, can I say this region that I am highlighting now is counted twice. This triangle is counted in the first black sector, this is also counted in the green sector. This one is also counted in the black sector, this is also counted in the green sector. So basically, can I say these two areas, the two triangles, are counted twice. So if they are counted twice, we will have to subtract them once. So let us subtract them. So what are we subtracting? We are subtracting area of these two equilateral triangles. So area of each equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 side square and there are two such triangles. So it is going to be 2 pi by 3 minus root 3 by 2. So this is going to be our final answer. So area of the shaded region this entire region is going to be 2 pi by 3 minus root 3 by 2. Again not so easy problem, right? particularly for beginners, I am almost sure a student will not be able to think like this. Particularly if you have practiced this kind of questions in the past, you might still give it a thought, okay, let me think of sectors, let me think of double areas, let me subtract a few areas. But if you have not done it, then it is almost unlikely that this thought will strike us. But I hope you have learned it now here in this video. So this was the second video that I had, sorry, the second question that I had for you. That is it for today, all right. So these are the two questions that I thought of sharing with you from circles area, which would be giving you a greater learning, right, with respect to the concepts uh, generally used in circles. I would suggest you to please practice more problems, right. You can try out previous year CAT questions. You can also uh, go for uh, these uh, several of the videos that we have uploaded uh, besides this video. Now those videos include uh, the concept videos, just like this one, and also the question discussions. For doing that, I would suggest you to subscribe to the channel, right? So that so that you get notification whenever we release a new video. And just for your information, roughly on weekly basis, we upload around 5 to 8 videos, right, including both concept as well as the uh, question discussion videos. On that note, let me end the session here. Thank you and all the very best.